Hey everyone, this is Kevin from Kevin's Microfleet. Today I'm coming to you with a Micro Galaxy Squadron review. We're going to be taking a look at the Series 5 U-Wing. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the figure, at the vehicle, at the packaging. We'll do some measurements and we'll do a comparison. Let's go ahead and dive into the review. So let's go ahead and start here with the packaging. So first thing here on the outside of the box, you've got Series 5 U-Wing. Down there, this is number 82. And then you can see the picture of it here with the wings attached. The wings do come separate, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit. As we turn this thing to the side, you get a chance to see there is the U-Wing flying through, uh, I guess that's Jetta. And then as we turn this around to the back, you get to see all of the different features of this vehicle. So you've got the wings that open, you have the figures that go in the cockpit, this little part removes so you can see the inside, doors open, landing gear, and then you got your other um, series five, uh, starfighter and light armor class. Here's the UBC. If you want this, uh, this is currently available on Amazon. So I have the, uh, associate link down in the description below. And then you can see here in the background, this little cardboard cut out there in the background of the box is just a rocky scene from, uh, from Jetta apparently. So as we go ahead and we take a look here first at the figures, we have three different figures here. So we get Jin, uh, Cassian, and K2SO. And so they come in this nice little uh, box here. So we can open this guy up to be able to look at each of the figures. And Micro Galaxy Squadron has really stepped their game up here with the figures over the past um, few series, especially from series one. I think they heard us loud and clear that we wanted more and better figures. So here is Jin. Uh, great job here with the sculpt on this one. Uh, lots of different details there on the jacket. I mean, you can see like the little ribbing there on the back of the jacket, as well as her hair looks really nice. We got a little bit of uh, paint on the, her hair there, which is not really that big of a deal. I mean, this figure is really small, so being able to do that on something this small is uh, is pretty good. And then if we look at this, uh, look at her from a size perspective really quick, you can see she's just under an inch, um, so seven eighths maybe. And then here is Cassian. So. They did a great job with the beard on Cassian. You can see there on his face, he's got something on there, like a little piece of paint or something kind of peeled across it. So I'll, I'll just fix that here once, uh, once this is over. They did a great job here. You got these little lines on the side of his jacket, which is really incredible. Um, great color on the figure as well. And pretty amazing that they're able to get the beard on there too. And he is one inch tall. And then we go to K2SO. So another great figure here. Um, they've got the Imperial Cog there on his arm, which is so small, you can really hardly see it when you're looking at, at it. That one looks like it got just a little bit smudged. But uh, great looking figure here for a larger droid. They've got you know a lot of detail there on the back and that little red. So he is a little bit taller. And so he is over an inch, so almost uh, an inch and a quarter tall. And it's cool to see because he is much taller than the actual uh, you know, humans in the movie as well. So cool to see that they scaled that really well. So those are your figures. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the U-Wing. So the, they did a really, really nice job with the deco on this. You can see all of the different streaking on here. They did a nice job with the panel lining and the wash. So typically in the past when they have done washes, the washes were just really heavy and didn't look very good. They did a much better job here of putting the wash on here to be able to get these panel lines, which really make this vehicle pop and it looks a lot better. And then you've got the engine burn on here as well, which is also a great feature that they're adding in. Just a little bit more extra detail on these vehicles that you know really help to make it uh, even more authentic. Um, and then you've got all of these little paint things that are chipped, which is really nice. And then as we flip it over here, you get a chance to see you got the engine glow. And then here is the bottom. 
and uh, and you've got this little see-through window to be able to see into the cockpit, which is really cool. Again, that's an awesome feature that they added that in there. There's even some transparent parts here on the side to be able to see inside. So if there's anybody that was able to get some lights inside of this thing, it would look really, really good. And then you've got some details here, even in the engine down here on the bottom, which is really cool. Now, when you get this thing in the box, these wings are separated. So the wings come underneath the, the vehicle and you can see it's got that little C-clip on there and there's just a little uh, piece of the, you know, the hull that's put together and then you can just clip this guy in there. Now, the other thing that's great about this wing, which I'll show it open here in a second, um, is that it's got this little tab on here to help lock this in place. So that way it doesn't just come flinging open, which is another great feature that they added onto this. With my wing, you can kind of see that it doesn't line up quite as good on this side as this side. And then even when I open it, if I open it up all the way like that, you can start to see it pops out of the actual uh, like piece it's supposed to be on. I'm not 100% sure why that's happening, but now, you know, as I go to close it back up, I got to push it back in in order to make it clip together. So I do remember seeing that when um, uh, Bitter Asian Dude Inc. ended up getting this and he ended up opening his and, and did the exact same thing. So hopefully that's not like a super widespread issue, but uh, you may run into that problem and I don't know how to fix it yet. So if we look at this from a features perspective, obviously you have the wings that will open. So we'll go ahead and swing those guys open. And this thing is huge when it's open like that. I'll, I'll get some measurements here in just a second, but that looks really cool with the wings out. I just don't know where I'd be able to display this with the wings out like that. That's gotta be like 14 inches across or something. Um, but uh, then as we keep going, you've got the landing gear here on the bottom. So you have two landing here on the front, one landing gear there on the on the each engine. So we'll go ahead and close those guys and then move this up. And so then as we go to the top, you have an opening cockpit. So we can open up the cockpit like that. The great thing about this is it does open up a lot so that way you can be able to get the figures in there as well as the play area that's inside. So you have your two little pilot seats there and they actually did a really good job you can see the details on like the computer that's inside there. And then this is another thing. So it doesn't look like there's any other part of this that opens, but there is. So when you pull up on that piece, it comes loose. You've got some great detail on the underside of that piece. And you know, there is your engine there on the top. So now you get a chance to see the underworkings of the engine and it's painted which again is a really nice feature in some of the other vehicles that they've had where they have removable parts, they might have something that's cool underneath, but it doesn't have any paint or any detail on it. So as we're looking inside here, you can see there are spaces for figures to sit. There is a little C clip here, which you can see there is a gun right there, which will I'll show you in a second how that rotates out. And then you can see again that uh, like little space that can go into the engine. So now, as we turn this thing to the side, you get a chance to see the doors. There are two little clips here on the side, and this is a really cool piece of this, so I'm gonna take this wing off so I can really show it. When you open up the door, you'll pull it out um, like this. Now you can see there's a little slide track, and then there's that little metal piece right there. So what happens is you pull the door out like that, and then you can slide the door back, which is a super clever way of doing that. I mean, I would have never thought that you would uh, put a mechanism in it like that to be able to open the door. Uh, I hope that at some point we get something similar to that with the LAAT, which we got the Republic gunship that we got in the previous series where they could do that. So here is the gun. So now it's on a ball joint there, which is really sweet. So you can really turn this thing around. And I've heard uh, that there will likely be another version of this U-Wing that will probably come with some other figures, 
for the Battle of Scarif. Obviously, I can't confirm that, but that has been stated some in the past, so I would say we've got uh, you know a chance that that could happen. So that guy goes in, and that door, it does the exact same thing on this side as well. So you can also pull that open and then slide it back like that, which is a pretty sweet feature to this. Uh, I can't believe that they added so much in such a, in a vehicle that's this small. Um, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together and we will do some measurements. So when the wings are in this position, when it's, uh, you know, and it's call it, it's landed position like this. Um, I've got to get the tape measure out for this because it's so big. So front to back, it is 12, 11 and three quarter inches from the back of the engine to the very tip of the wings. Um, from side to side, it's about three and three quarter inches, maybe call it four inches with the engines on there. And then when we go ahead and open the wings up, this is where, again, this thing is so huge, like that side to side. So from wingtip to wingtip, it is 18 inches, which is crazy. So again, I mean, you can kind of see that with the shelves in the background, how big that is. But that looks really, really cool. Um, this would be a great vehicle to be able to have on some type of a really high display like this with it flying in like that. That looks really, really cool. Now, um, I wanted to compare this to another U-Wing. So uh, this is actually the Revel U-Wing. Um, so this is a, a model kit that you can put together that does have lights and sounds. You can see the size is very similar maybe three quarters of an inch different in terms of the uh the front to back of it it doesn't have quite as many features to it obviously it doesn't have an opening cockpit it doesn't have any landing gear on it per se and then you can see here with the wings they're pretty floppy they don't actually sit in place so you can open this back up and you can actually extend the wings back further than what you can do with the Micro Galaxy one. So this one looks much more like that V shape, which is what we're looking for out of this type of vehicle. And then it gets, it does have light, so, and sounds. Which is pretty cool. But this is really the only other Ewing that we have in a scale that's very similar. All of the details and everything like that, the panel lining and whatnot that's on here, was all done by myself. It comes in a very bland, uh, you know, plastic, um, uh, like design or whatever. There aren't really any of the panel lines on here. So I put a wash on it in order to be able to bring some of that out, but, uh, it's still a cool one. I would say for sure micro galaxy wins on that. And I want to take a look at this actually compared to one of the other just regular, vehicles that we have in the line, which would be the Y-Wing. So now if we look at the U-Wing next to the Y-Wing, you can see that the Y-Wing is much smaller. So I would say from a scale perspective, the U-Wing looks like it might just be a smidge too small relative to some of the other vehicles. Um, but again, it doesn't matter to me. I'm kind of in the boat of as long as the scale is reasonable, it's a bigger ship than what we typically are going to get from a Starfighter class vehicle. I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't make that big of a difference to me. So that is your review. If you like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe. There are links again in the description below to be able to get this thing off of Amazon. Uh, thanks for watching. I look forward to catching everybody on the next review.